with life. It's so precious and it's so delicate. I love, without love, you don't have either of the other two. The leadership stance that you take in your life, though, I think is directly correlated to the amount of love you have in your life. What's going on, guys? <laughs> Welcome back to the L3 Perspective. My name is Glenn Davis, as you know. I'm sitting here with my guy, Cameron Macias. Coach Cam, what yes, up? Yes, sir. And uh, we want to welcome you guys back to another episode of the L3 Perspective, where we talk life, love, leadership. Bro, how you doing? I'm doing good. It's Thursday. It's Friday Eve. And I'm about to go to the Mountain House. So life is good. Again. Yeah. It's just like a different... For those of you that have not stayed in the mountains of any sort, I highly suggest you do that. The quiet alone is worth just being there. Yeah. I will say, being from the city, I, I like that vibe. Yeah. It's just like I like the know, vibe of the mountain. Yeah, you're just like you don't see nobody, you don't mm -hmm. hear nobody. Yeah, but again, like, creative yeah, mode. Yeah, you like do creative mode. I like you know, you know, you know, being here like there's not much I get to do with my house. So there, it's nice to like work outside and clean up the garage and do the you know, I don't know, it makes you feel manly. <laughs> For sure. Uh, so before we get started, guys, um, per the usual, uh, like, love, share, message, um, subscribe. You know, let us know what you like. Let us know what you don't like. At the end of the day, we do this podcast for you guys, our listeners, because we want to provide value and we want to have conversations that you all think are important um, and we want to have those with you. So that being said, click the buttons, ring the bells, send a message, let us know that you're loving it. Um, but other than that, today's conversation was something that... Every, so, so first of all, everybody's always talking about... Win, 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 win. Everything's going great. Mm -hmm. Life is the best thing in the whole world. There's nothing in the, in this entire universe that's like going to stop me, whatever have you. That's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> let's, just, let's just end that right now. Um, Glenn and I thought it would be important to kind of talk about, you know, how are you staying motivated during the hard times? Mm -hmm. You know, when things aren't going so well, right? Like, how are we you know, persevering through those mm -hmm. times when there's a lot of weight on us, when there's a lot of um, uh, things, you know, requirements that we got to get done or things that are in need of our attention. And it just feels like things maybe aren't even going all that well at the moment. Right. Right. And mm -hmm. it's hard to, you know, you can't just do things whenever you feel good. Right. That's just, unfortunately, that's the causality mm -hmm. of life. Like, I'm having a bad day. I don't want to pay my bills. <laughs> that's, that's just not <laughs> how not it works. Happen. That's not going to happen. <laughs> like, oh, I, you know, I, I don't want to go to work because I'm just like, man. Um, so, so anyway, so I thought this would be a good conversation to have as far as like being a person yeah. and things not always going as perfect as they should. It's a great topic because it's a, a relevant topic. Mm -hmm. Like, like you said, a lot. You have uh, the groups of people that are just like, you know, win, 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 win. Yeah. Uh, but then realistically, you know, things, uh, there, are, there are obstacles in that win or on that journey to win. It's For sure. Dips in the road is potholes and barriers yep. and um, roadblocks, big walls. Yeah. Um, and I think it's crazy because you never, like people always talk about those things like so much later on than like in the moment. Yeah. You know, and I get it, you know, that's, it's probably like a facade thing or like an image. Like, that's why it's funny. Like, even when I talk to people, people are just like, oh man, like you're killing it mm -hmm. and you get, you're doing all these things at one time. And I'm like, bro, I forget shit all the time. Right. I was supposed to do like 10 things yesterday. I didn't, I didn't do, I did nine. All right. Yeah. I did one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and it's like, and it's not even that I'm trying to, and I think that's something I've, I've recently been trying to do more of is like point those things out. Like, Hey. Like the post I did today was all about that, right? Like, you know, I got this, I got a lot of ideas and everyone thinks I know exactly where it's going. And I know in certain aspects of where some things are going, right. but at the end of the day, there's still a lot of like my, my bubble mm -hmm. that is not filled with like any particular thing necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, I know it in a general sense, like as long as I keep building like my brand as a whole, like things will kind of figure themselves out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the pieces to the puzzle. Mm -hmm. yeah. Piece to the bubble. The, or the pieces to the bubble. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a very interesting topic uh, because, you know, you go through those seasons in life where you're just like, 
all right, I want to go after it. Yeah. And something that I've I've more recently learned is like, as I'm setting those goals, you know, also thinking about the potential obstacles and how to navigate through yeah uh, those things in case in case something happens, mm-hmm. right? Um, and that is that is helping me uh, push faster through the barriers. Yeah. Uh, because I've already kind of thought about the obstacles. Well, again, while I'm a very optimistic person, mm-hmm. still having the sights on, okay, cool. While my goal is to get here, mm-hmm. there's going to be some things in, in the middle of that path or that journey. And so if this happens, this is an opportunity for me to shift, go left to go right, yeah. uh, for me to tap into my resources, for me to tap into the, my, my circle of people, mm-hmm. um, you know, and, and come to the table to brainstorm on, hey, guys, this is what I'm trying to do. How can how can I, in your experience, what are some thoughts that you can you can share with me from your experience of going through or navigating through some of that or some of the clients that you spoke to or coached yeah. through that process? Yeah. So I know I just do a whole bunch of stuff out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the, the most important thing that you said was there's a process. Right. I think in today's age, we get really stuck in the... Um, like you're going to win super fast, yeah. you know, and, and it's hard to, you know, like you see, and it's funny cause I like, I'll discover things and I'll think like, Oh, they, they just like got big all of a sudden or something like that. But then you, you research it and you're like, Oh no, they've been, been at this for like 15 10, years, yeah, 15, yeah, yeah. 10 years, yeah. you know, and it's just, yeah, yeah. I'm just now coming across it, but that doesn't mean they weren't here. Right. And I think we get stuck in that a lot. Mm-hmm. Is if I haven't heard of you before, then it must have been some type of overnight success. Right. Yeah. And we do that to ourselves too. Mm-hmm. You know, as things are building, we're like, oh, why don't you know? Why is this not building as fast as I want? You know, how? Why am I not making as much money as I mm-hmm. want? Or why am I not doing this? And it's in retrospect, it's it's a lot of uh, wins, a lot of lessons, a lot of. Um, reevaluating right. as far as the process is concerned, you know, um, I can't tell you how many things I said I was going to do. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, and I started and I realized that's not what I want to do. Yeah. You know, I feel as though when you're able to give your attention and your effort to things for an extended amount of time, that's when you're, re- that's when it's really like what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Because although every day might not be a win, you, you are consistently showing up. Right. I feel like at the beginning, it's super easy to show up for anything. Right. You know, first you have month. That motivation. Yeah, the motivation. Yep. First month, two, three, four months. I feel as though, in my particular like experience, like once you hit like six months to a year, mm-hmm. if you are no longer excited about moving the yeah. needle, yeah. then maybe that's not word like that. Maybe that's not the needle for you. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny you mentioned that six, six month mark because we were just talking a little earlier. I was like. Bro, it's already June, mm-hmm. right? We're six months into this thing, and I remember in January of of looking at the um, my business plan from November, the November yeah. prior of, of developing it. January hit, and I was so motivated, yeah, right. And so six months into it, I'm still inspired to complete it, but it's just like that was kind of, you know, you're you got have six more months left in the year. Yeah. What will you accomplish? And then, yeah. you know, further in the conversation, you're like, where do you see yourself a year from now? Yeah. Right. And I think that when you talk about um, the process, I think Mm -hmm. that is a question to ask yourself when thinking about the process. Yeah. Right. Because most people be like, hey, this is what I want to accomplish. Yeah. Right. However, like you mentioned, talking about the process, even kind of uh, uh, backwards mapping it to Mm -hmm. scale it down to like, okay, cool. If you have a five year plan, what do you or do you see yourself? Yeah. uh, A year from now. Yeah. No. And that's. And that's like the the backwards mapping is important. Right. I think we get so caught up in like forward mapping that we don't back that we don't backward map. Yeah, yeah, you know most people. So it's like okay, this is the end goal, but what was like the step that got them to this? I saw a video. I sent it to you the one where it was like for the next two weeks when you buy something, yeah. think about how they got you to buy it. Yeah. You know, and not just like, oh, I want a coffee, but like, why did you choose that coffee? Right. Why did you want coffee all of a sudden? Yeah. What made you okay? You know, and it, and you know, Net sent that to me, so because she's yeah. always looking out for me. Yeah. And so shout out to Net. Shout out to Net. <laughs> <laughs> so she's a butthead, but I love her. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, but that's a, that is that's a, that exact type of thinking, right? Because mm-hmm. what the video went on to say was like, okay, if you can think about that for you, and in what and why you did it. 
Mm-hmm. Now think about why your customers would do that for you. Right. So it's the same thing when it comes to kind of like where you are at mm-hmm. and maybe why, I don't want to say why things are there because sometimes we just don't control things. Right. It's just life happens that, you know, it's not always your fault, stuff like that. Um, but it's more so like, okay, I'm in this position now. Mm-hmm. In one year, I want to be here. What needs to happen today? So I can get from here to there. Right. You know, or what's going to happen in the next month. Because sometimes that too is is not just a daily thing. Mm -hmm. It's like, all right, I just got to, I got to keep doing this every day for the next month. And then I'll see results in a month. And not forgetting to, to, to check, to check those measurements. Yeah. Yeah. The measurements is a big one too. You know, like any super, any really successful person or company there's always metrics with Mm -hmm. it, you know, and the metrics may change obviously based off what it is, but how are you measuring the metrics? You know? So like Mm -hmm. with the, the tattoo company that I'm working with, that's a big thing. Hey, you know, it's not just talking to somebody in the DMS Mm -hmm. and whatever, like we need to track every consultation, right? You know, how many of them came back? How many of them put deposits? How many left reviews? Like, those things need to be tracked because we need to know what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong. Yeah. Like how are we, you know, how do we need to adjust in order to be the most successful mm-hmm. um, in this business? You know, um, are there particular things that people are asking for mm-hmm. that we may have not noticed initially? Right. Now we notice them, you yeah. know? So like one of the things was, you know, when I came on is, like the the payment system that they were doing is it was kind of like wherever we get the payment we get the payment right. and I'm like no nah, we gotta be more organized than that bro yeah. but at the same time you know the artist brought up a really good point is like hey you know I get that this is really simple in the moment but after you've been tattooed for ten hours mm-hmm. this is the you don't want to do this right yeah, you yeah. know and and and, it, and it'll hurt him because then if you make it too hard that then limits maybe like the tip for him. Mm-hmm. And obviously, like he gets a hundred percent of the tip, not the company. So, like, and I want to make sure he's taken care of. Right. So I said, okay, how do we find this middle ground then? And he's mm-hmm. like, well, I have one of the card readers. Okay, cool. Then we need to link the card reader. Right. You know, so the, the, like those types of things. And so it's like you may have a solution, they may have a solution, but it the solution doesn't work a hundred percent for everybody. So right. how do we get it to work for? How do we meet in the middle? Yeah. And, yeah. and as a leader, it's important for you to identify that. Mm-hmm. Um, and be able to look at that, and like you said, with the metrics and everything, and and be able to backwards map it. And yeah. it's a lot of responsibility <laughs> as, a le- as a leader. People kind of overlook. Yeah, um, the thing is just like telling people what to do. Yeah. Like, yeah. nah, fam, we don't. Yeah. It's like <laughs> so. There's like a lot to do. <laughs> so, so in life, right? We we you know kind of talking about um, being able to persevere through these these obstacles these challenges because especially right now and what's going on in the economy what's going on yeah. in people's finances what's going on just across the uh, world of yeah. whether it's people uh, looking to start a business or in business mm-hmm. and, and hitting road roadblocks in life how is um in your experience how have you seen either some of your clients or maybe something that you've been able to share with your clients to persevere through that barrier or those barriers, whatever they're going through. Yeah. I mean, so like there's a realistically, so I've had clients on the finance side, coaching side, stuff like that. And mm-hmm. I think ultimately the biggest thing is getting down to like the root problem. Right. You know, because, so we have a expression in coaching where whatever is the first thing that they told you is a lie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because that's not actually yeah. what their problem is. That's not actually what they're concerned about right now. And so one of the things, like I had one client where she was talking about her uh, air conditioner unit. Mm-hmm. And she said, oh, the air conditioner is broken and blah, yeah. blah, And I was like, oh, okay. And so, you know, I start coaching her. And what it turned out was that the coaching or the the air conditioner was the least of her problems. Mm. It was actually, she was most frustrated about a relationship that she was having at work Mm -hmm. and how it was, you know, she feels as though she's not being appreciated, Mm -hmm. but she also feels as though the person that she's not connecting with is not feeling appreciated 
and that they both got like bamboozled by the organization. Mm -hmm. So they're like mad at each other when in reality it's like the organization's fault because the organization didn't communicate with them about expectations. Right. And so they both had different expectations of what the other would bring to the table. So neither of their faults, but yet that's obviously causing like this rift between them. Mm -hmm. And because of that, and because she cared so much about working well with this person, Mm -hmm. everything else just got magnified. And so the first thing she talked about was their conditioner, but the entire coaching session was about trying to build this bridge right. with the person she worked with. Yeah. And so it's kind of the same thing, like when it comes to finances, right? Like some of my clients, when I talk to them, it's like, it's great. You want to save your retirement. That's a responsible decision. Unfortunately, we got to get you out of debt first. Right. Okay, cool. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. But how'd you get into debt in the first place? You know, like I got one, like I have one client where, she she admitted straight up. She said, uh, "I love buying things on Amazon." Mm-hmm. And granted, you have the money for it. You're not in. You know, they, luckily they're not in any huge debt stuff like that. But at the same time, it's cutting into a huge amount of right. their disposable income that they could then do for retirement. So it's like, okay, well, why do you buy things on Amazon? Right. Because there's things going on at home. Mm-hmm. Realistically, uh, what is it like shop therapy or, right. or yep. retail therapy, whatever mm-hmm. have you? And so. Okay, cool. Maybe like we need to fix that situation so we can fix your money situation. Right. Because if you're spending because of how you're feeling, mm-hmm. then you're gonna feel yourself into being poor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's 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 true. And I, I think that people don't understand. Um, like when you talk about perseverance, right? That um, I don't think people even understand the basis of what that means. Yeah. Like just just having the ability to keep pushing through in spite of obstacles. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think that when you when you think of um you know when you think of that, it takes a certain there it takes certain uh characteristics, certain traits no. to be that individual that when life happens to you, you decide to keep pushing yeah. through that barrier. Yeah. And um you know, that's something I've been thinking about a lot lately. Mm-hmm. Just like, you know, there, there are things that happen in life where you could just be like, hey, I just want to give up. For sure. But if that's not your mentality, if that's <laughs> not your personality, Never you know, the, 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 the gift is that you'll keep pushing. Mm-hmm. Now, the downside sometimes in that is that people get blinded and don't understand when to actually throw in the towel. Yeah. Because the direction that they're moving in one, in one direction, like if they come to, to that fork in the road they may already know that, hey, I've given everything I can give to kind of keep yeah. building this road, but I know that this road, which was initially connected to this, mm-hmm. this may be the direction, even though it's not a completely different path. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that that those are those are thoughts that have, have been kind of like when you mentioned the word perseverance, that was something that, that popped in my head. Mm-hmm. I remember so recently, I'd say one of the biggest perseverance moments I had was uh, like after the, after my divorce Mm -hmm. and the kids were split. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and my, you know, my kid's mother was like home with them a lot. So they were really used to that. Mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden she wasn't. Mm -hmm. And and then the kids are going to two different houses. Mm -hmm. Why are mommy and daddy, you know, all that type of stuff. And I remember like, like crying to net because, you know, no matter what I did for my kids, all they wanted was their mom. Mm. And I knew it wasn't an attack on me. It was just, it was, you know, they're kids. They're like, they want the situation, but it didn't mean it didn't hurt. And I remember talking to my mom about it and I was just like, I I just like, I feel like the worst father in the world. Like, cause my kids, no matter, you know, all they do is they talk about what they want to be there. They want, you know, like doesn't matter once, you know, I get a McDonald's every day and they still be like, we want to eat this shit at mom's house. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but I knew like it just was going to take some time mm-hmm. and, you know, and I, and I even remember, you know, talking to like the school counselor about it. Um, it w- it was so funny because my kids were doing things at home that like hurt my feelings, but in, but out in the world, they were like singing my praises mm. and the counselor's like, it would be the opposite if they really didn't care about you, right. like they would tell you to your face, yeah, everything's cool. But then they would like talk mess about you once they went to school. And she's like, <laughs> it's the opposite. She's like, they have said nothing but great things about you. Yeah. Um, she's like, just unfortunately, and sometimes being a dad is like, you don't get your, your thanks or your flowers, whatever mm-hmm. until later in life. Right. 
Like, yeah. because a lot of times the mom is getting all the attention and mm-hmm. because they're home with them and all these types of things. And so, like, fathers usually get the appreciation later on. Yeah. When the kids realize everything that they did yeah. for them, you know it's funny. I'm a words of affirmation guy, so I'd be I'd be trying <laughs> oh, know, to like oh, I know you are. forcefully get like <laughs> give Darren and Isaiah to give me my flowers. Like, hey, you ain't got to give me the whole bouquet, but I but I need I need, I need one two, of them one, two, three, four roses today <laughs> for sure, for sure, man. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. you yeah. you are probably the most words of affirmation um, man that I've ever met. Yeah. Yep. I'll take it. I'll take it. I know who I am. You got no. I mean, you to you know who you are. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. But yeah, man, uh, the, the topic, the the perseverance. Um, I, I actually, as you were sharing that story, um, I will say one of the things that kind of stood out to me, I'm going to put my uniform back on, right? So years ago- You can take- you can take the man out the uniform, but not the uniform out the man. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Um, I, I remember uh, this was this was the point where one of the light bulbs clicked when I was just like, hey, I will never allow the uniform to define me. Yeah. I will never, never allow the, the, the evaluation performance report uh, mm-hmm. to, 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 um, to just be who I am, right? In the sense of, I remember... I used to have a, I had a supervisor at one particular point in my career where they were just okay with being below average. Okay. In life, right? Yeah. And just in life in general. Like yeah. not even just military, just in life. Yeah. And I remember remember they had the first shift of the new evaluation report. Mm. It was like, hey, this is how you're supposed to mark people down or et cetera, et cetera, right? And, and at, this was at a point where I feel like I was probably at one of my almost peaks of like what I was given. I mean, you could, like, I felt like I was like the Superman of the Air Force, yeah. right? Oh, work. Everybody's a zero. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, but it was like, and I got marked down and it wasn't so much of her marking me down. It was more of the, like who she was the, marking you down. Well, well, not even that, just the, the lack of explanation when I was just like, so oh, I'm just okay. kind of curious, just kind of giving me yeah. clarity. I have yeah. another half of decade left in my career. So yeah. I want to just make sure that I'm measuring up um, and, you know, or at least understand. So I know, okay, this is what you need to do next year yeah. to get better. Right. And so fa- fast forward, it really, uh, it hurt in one of my, my upcoming promotions. Yeah. Right. And while the rest of the air force was still getting marked yep. the old way. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. And so, uh, it, it, it really hurts. So the, the point I want to make with that is that I really had to think about like, again, number one, you can't allow this, this performance report to define yeah. who you are, right? Either you go and you give a hundred percent all the time or you, or you don't, yeah. You'll, because as you continue to go through life, you will allow these things that you can't control to control the to outcome. Di- of what dictate, you can. Yeah. And so I, I really had to, uh, keep pushing through and it was like, you know, at the end of the day, I can just keep practicing on being great. Yep. Because when I hang up the uniform, yep. that's just enough practice that I've been able to practice behind the closed doors. Mm-hmm. And now when I'm out here in the real world, exactly, I, I, the muscle memory is there, mm-hmm. you know, so. And like I always say, haters going to hate and potatoes going to potato. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel man. that though, because yeah. I, I mean, you know, I was told a lot that um i was a special type of personality Mm -hmm. to like deal with um and that was from like a young age you know like i was i remember in the sixth grade i literally had a teacher lock me in a classroom and start calling me names oh wow! she's like you're demented Mm -hmm. you're like a psychopath like i was i was in the sixth grade you're a psychopath Da, 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 all these. I was like, "What is going on, man?" (laughs) And so, like, that's crazy. So, so I and I also like had to hit a point where I was just like, I am no, I'm no longer going to subscribe Mm -hmm. to what um, the negative thoughts are on who I am because I know who I am and I know I'm dope and I have enough people telling me I'm cool. It's not like I'm just being completely arrogant. Like, yeah. So you had that mindset in the sixth grade. No. Okay. Okay. It took me a while to get that. So up until honestly, probably the last two or three years, like I was always me, but I was like, you know, you get wrapped up in that stuff, like whether it's the military or the corporate world, whatever, every, you know, everybody gets wrapped up into the like positional power and like, Mm -hmm. I want to promote and stuff like that. And I just, 
for a little while, I, I lost myself because I wasn't getting the opportunities that I wanted. Mm -hmm. And a lot of what was told to me was like, well, because you're not playing the game. Mm. Because, you know, you're, you, you're, you got to soften up your, you have to soften up your personality because, yeah. um, so a lot of people just don't take to it. Yeah. And then, you know, and in my, and in my mind, I was like, well, if I'm not the majority, like, yeah, I'm special, but maybe I'm not special in a good way. Mm -hmm. And so, but then like, I, I got over that. I was like, wait a minute. No, I'm, I'm the other way. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm dope as shit. Yeah. And it's, you guys are the problem. <laughs> and, and once, and it was funny because once I actually started thinking like that, more people entered my life who said that exact same thing. You are, you are a special personality, mm -hmm. but in a good way. Right. And, and you know, and you are someone who doesn't follow, tote the line in a good for sure, way. For sure. Um, and, it was just a mindset shift, funny enough. Mm -hmm. Like, I had almost, like, given up. I was like, all right, I'm going to just do me. Yeah. I'm going to be me. I don't care what anybody says. I'm yeah. going I'm to do what I need to do. I'm going to act how I need to act. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stay within the confines of who Cam is. And, like, it was like the universe was just like, all right, cool. Give him what he wants. Yeah. <laughs> make, yeah. make life great now. Now, yes. that he's, now that he's given up or, yeah. like, it's just accepted it. And so, um, unfortunately, you know, as you know, there are a lot of people who are, like, trapped yeah in their mindset um of 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 not only who they think they are but honestly who they think society wants them to be yeah yeah um i talk to a lot of people who like i just i feel bad for them mm -hmm. because i know that they're doing things for these like honorable reasons yeah but in my mind i'm like all you're all you're doing is dishonoring yourself and getting further and, and further getting away. further and yeah. further away from like your true self. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, that it's funny. Like um, as you were saying that, I was just like, Yo, the, the the mind is so powerful. Yeah. Like if you learn how to turn that switch on. Yep. Right. In, in a number of different ways. Like if you're you know striving for greatness and you're like, hey, I need to take it up a notch, and not just yeah. I go into mama mode. Yep. Uh, but just really understanding how to turn that switch on, it mm. is amazing how quickly number one but how yeah. your life begins to take that shift it does and it man it uh, i i'll say this as we as we get the wrap up um mm -hmm. right now uh my oldest omari we're, we're working on that switch yeah. shout out oh shout out oh <laughs> <laughs> like you know one of the things that i know that he's been able to like he has the potential again we talked about a couple of episodes like he is great i mean he has the potential to be exceptionally great yeah right and there i think that uh not just him but just people in general like when you learn how to turn that switch on yeah when you already have the potential of being great mm -hmm. it's a, like it's like sky's the limit of the yep. potential of whatever you're trying to accomplish yeah you know and you know there, there's a that that saying about failure uh regarding perseverance but, but with failure like the there's there's a, the only guarantee of failure is just to stop trying thanks and going circling back to us talking about this this topic, I often remind myself that life will continue to be hard. There will continue to be barriers and obstacles. Yeah. Um, but perseverance is not something new to you. You know what I mean? Like you've experienced life in so many different uh, areas. Yeah. Uh, as you navigated in your forty <laughs> so years in life, yeah, but who's forty? I know, right? <laughs> But but you know the the point with that is just like just to remind yourself to keep going. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, and find a community that will help you push that barrier. Mm -hmm. You know that that's where I'm at, man. I'm so grateful for everything I have in life, and uh, more in particularly the people like that I get the opportunity to spend life with, man. Like it's a it's a dope bumpy ride. <laughs> <laughs> so. Shout out to my circle. Hey. <laughs> but uh hey, as we uh as we wrap up, y'all, so so topic for today, straight up, just perseverance, pushing through. It's okay to have bad days. It's mm -hmm. okay for everything not to be okay in the moment. Mm -hmm. Um, but like G said, you know, it's only failure if you stop and if you quit. 
Okay. If the steps, if the steps or, you know, the progression slows down, that's okay. Slow progression is better than no progression. Mm -hmm. And, and that's something to remember. Right. So, um, so as we close up, Hey, we appreciate y'all joining us, you know, like, love, share, um, hit us up, tell us, you know, we want to get deeper and deeper. I'm sure you guys have noticed as, as the episodes have gone on, Mm -hmm. it's becoming a little bit more personal, and we're talking a little bit more about the mindset and, you know, the good days, the bad days, um, you know, and that's what we want to do here is, is it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's real life conversations and, and how life, love and leadership are really going to pack the day to day, the year to year, you know, the life to life. So other than that, we appreciate y'all and we will see y'all next week. Yes, sir. Peace. so precious and it's so delicate I love without love you don't have either of your two. the leadership stance that you take in your life though i think is directly correlated to the amount of love you have in your life <laughs>